Hello. In this video we will look at time series and the seasonal variation. The table and time series graph give information about the number of visitors to the British Museum between quarter 1 2015 and quarter 3 2017. The number of visitors is in thousands. Here is the information represented in the table. We have each of the years and we have each quarter. And then the values have been plotted on our time series graph. So at 2015 quarter one, 1,460 and so on. Those points are joined with dotted lines because we're unsure of what's happened between those data points. These points are a four point moving average and that's plotted in the middle of the four points which have been averaged. So here it's in the middle of the first four points and this is in the middle of the points two, three, four and Q1 of the next year. The blue line is the trend line and we can see here that we have a downward trend. The seasonal variation is the actual value, the original data value, minus the trend line value. So I've set up a new table here. I have each of the quarters and I have transcribed the values from the original table. You can see 1,460 and then 1,840 and so on. I've then read values from the trend line. So at 2015 Q1, I read the value here, which is 1,780. I go along to the next quarter, 2015 Q2, up until I reach the trend line and I read the value that is 1740 and I continue for every quarter reading from the trend line. The seasonal variation is the first value in this table, the original data value minus the value I've read from the trend line. So in the first case it's 1460 minus 1780 and that is minus 320. Now don't worry that that's a negative number. What we're finding is we're finding this distance between the trend line and the original data point. And below the trend line is going to be a negative value. I do that subtraction, 1840 minus 1740. And here we have a positive value of 100. That shows me that I'm above the trend line. Moving on, I do the same subtraction. Here I have 290. That's showing me that I'm 290 above the trend line. Let me fill this table out. So there's my table completed. We'll just see the final value is 1690 minus 1430, 260. And that means that I am 260 above my trend line. On this slide, I will show you how to calculate the mean seasonal variation and how to use that to make predictions. This is the table from the previous slide. I've copied it over. And here's our graph with its trend line. I'm going to make a new table and I'm going to arrange it with the year and the quarters going across because I'm actually going to find a mean for each quarter. Then I've transcribed the data from this table. You can see the minus 320, then the 100, and then the 390, and so on until I've completed this table. I want to find a mean seasonal variation for Q1. So I take the values for Q1, I add them up, and I divide by 3. That will give me minus 223. Yes, I'm expecting a negative value. They're all negative values. 
I do the same here for the quarter two values. Adding the three of them together and then dividing by three is 113. I'm going to do the same for these three values. Add them together and divide by 3 gives me 260. I do the same with these two values, just two of them, so add together and divide by 2. That gives me minus 120. I can use these mean seasonal variations to predict values. I'm going to predict a value for 2017 quarter 4. I do that by first reading the trend line value for that quarter. Here it's 1,400. I'm going to add on to that the quarter 4 mean seasonal variation. Now, adding on negative 120 means I'm actually doing a subtraction, 1,400 subtract 120. That gives me 1,280. I can plot that value on our graph. It's Q4, 1,280. So that's my predicted value. Just to recap, that's the trend line value plus the mean seasonal variation. This gives us our predicted value. That's the end of this video. I hope you've found it useful.